I wonder what the world will look like when I'm grown up. Technology is moving so fast. How will it change the way we live and the way we work? I've heard about Eindhoven in the Netherlands, a hot spot for innovation. Some say it's one of the best places to live. Apparently, this is where the future is built, right in the middle of the world's smartest region, called Brainport. I'm Tom. I'm 11. My favourite subject at school is science, and I like to discover stuff. Eindhoven has a lot of smart people who are working on new technologies to solve global challenges, like climate change and how to deal with people who are getting older and older. Cities need to be smart in the future. Energy needs to be sustainable and healthcare needs to be more personalised. In Eindhoven, big companies like ASML, NXP, VDL, TomTom, Intel and Shimano are working on these challenges. Eindhoven, one company in particular comes to mind, Philips. In the past few decades, Philips has made Eindhoven flourish. Their researchers invented countless consumer electronics lighting and healthcare innovations that became international standards. It looks like innovation and entrepreneurship has been a part of Eindhoven for decades. particular place that needs checking out. High-tech campus Eindhoven, the smartest square kilometre in Europe, some say even the world. More than 180 high-tech companies are located here and work together in an ecosystem for open innovation. Multinationals, small medium enterprises, startups and institutes they all work together on new technologies to stay ahead of the global challenges. I hear this concept of open innovation is unique in the world. Lately, I've been hearing a lot about startups. I get the feeling they're different from other companies. They're small, they take a lot of risk. It sounds interesting. Startup Accelerator 
High Tech XL already helped more than 80 startups to bring their innovations to the market and to scale up their business. Hey Tom. Hey, welcome. Take a seat. All right, Tom. So what we do here at High Tech Excel is we help new companies, young companies who've invented something really cool, a new technology or a new product. Um, we help them to bring it to the end user. So for instance, somebody like you. Um, because these crazy inventors like you would see in a cartoon, they sit in their lab and they develop this, this new product or their technology, but they're not that good at actually bringing it to the market, as we say. So that's where we help and that's how we, as a company, think we can make the world a better place. And how we do that is with what we call a program. So a program is basically three months in which we get all these crazy inventors, we put them into one space all together, and we have them do um, different exercises if you want. So basically we, we train them and we actually help them build their business. Now you can imagine that it's impossible for me to understand all the specific details of the technologies that we're using because they're so new and, and, and so disruptive. So how do we solve that? We solve it by getting in a lot of people, more than 300 very, very, very smart people who know a lot about a very small amount of information or technology. So we know exactly who to bring in, at which point in the program to coach the startups on the specific things that they need. So I have to tell you a, a secret. The, these little um, companies, these young companies, they're really very small and they're working in a, in a world that is made for big people. And so sometimes it's, it's very hard to make yourself uh, stand out. Now, in this region, here in Eindhoven, we have some very big and successful companies. Um, we call them the industry giants. Now, what we do is we help these startups, these little people, by putting them on the shoulders of giants. So we have them collaborate with the big companies. These companies have decided together in the Eindhoven Startup Alliance to attract more of these young companies to the region and to help them by putting them on their shoulders. Now our program of course works together with these giants. We work together with them to connect them to the right little people, the right startups. So I've told you some cool things that we do here but of course there's much more that we work on. We work in healthcare, so that's helping um, doctors perform very, very complicated procedures uh, way better or helping to cure diseases that for now didn't have a cure at all. We work on energy as well, so it's a sunny day today and we are working on how to capture that energy from the sun way better to help actually in your car capture the, the energy by putting solar cells, this is what they're called, on the roof of your car, but also making actually your entire house able to capture energy. And another thing that we focus on is smart environments. So making all the things around you, buildings, cars, able to measure what's happening, so for instance air quality, and that we can use that information to make our environment better. So for instance air quality, the air that we breathe, make sure that it's good for us. So I've been talking for ages now and you're probably wondering when is he gonna stop talking, so why don't I just show you what's going on. Let's go to High Tech Plaza. While listening to Thibaut, I realized that even the smallest startup can make a difference. <laughs> The first startup Thibaut shows me is Biflow. They're developing a 3D food printer that prints over 50 different ingredients. Chocolate, butter, veggies, fruit and even meat. The Biflow 3D printer gives a second life to food that gets thrown away because it doesn't look perfect. 
This helps to solve food waste. 3D food printing can also help people with swallowing problems. Normally they're limited to liquids and drinks. Now they can eat a beautifully shaped puree. Cool! Up next is PlasmaCure, a startup that heals wounds using a smart pad. In the Netherlands alone, half a million people suffer from open wounds for weeks, months, or even years. Like people with an open leg, burns, or diabetes. The PlasmaCure smart pad closes wounds by using a cold plasma. The smart pad works like lightning. It kills small bacteria, making it easier for a wound to close. We're off to premature babies with Bambi Medical. Tamara tells me premature babies have to be kept warm and the vital signs need to be checked. Normally, this happens through all kinds of wires and patches. When removed, they cause a baby pain and stress. The Bambi belt solution offers relief. It's a printed belt without sticky electrodes. Because it's a wireless, babies have no stress and mothers can provide kangaroo care. Hubert from Salvia Bioelectronics. He explains how nerves are the wiring of our bodies. Nerve signals control our body functions and determine how and what we feel. If you have a chronic disease, it can have an impact on the activity patterns of your nerves. So, Salvia Bioelectronics developed a small implantable device that delivers tiny electrical impulses to influence nerve activity. It kind of works like a pacemaker. The startup expects to develop drug-free therapies for neurological diseases without any side effects. I hope one day I will be smart enough to have my own startup. That will be so cool. At High Tech Campus Eindhoven, institutes are also located. Like here at Holst Center, it's an independent research and development center, a good example of the open innovation concept. The institute collaborates with different international industry partners and universities on different research topics. I'm curious what kind of technologies they're creating. So the place we are now is called Whole Center. It was established about 12 years ago with uh, two big mother organizations, TNO, which is the biggest Dutch research institute, and IMAC, which is the biggest Belgian research institute across the board. In Whole Center, we are looking at ultra low power, flexible electronics. So things that can be put on the body, in a table, outside in a building, that uh, can monitor the building, monitor human being, monitor the environment around us. In the whole center we have about 300 people from all over the world, about 30 nationalities, and we have a, a lot of students from universities that help us to do innovation together. So how does it feel to have the health patch? Good? Okay, nice. So with the aging society and people want to live longer and healthier, also people want to leave hospitals earlier and recover faster from, for example, a heart surgery, doctors and patients both want to have new technologies. So this health patch that you can wear it for a week, take shower, go to bed, sleep and even sport with, supports getting your heart rate, breathing rate and movement information, continuously send it via a cloud to your mobile phone, 
or a hospital and the doctors and patients can monitor their well-being. So, uh, Tom, in the field of automotive, uh, we do, there's a lot of trends like uh, green uh, mobility and autonomous driving and mo mobility as a uh, total picture that uh, we believe current electronics cannot answer all the questions and uh, flexible electronics can add a lot of value. We can make electronics thin and flexible, but also transparent. We can integrate them, for example, into a car seat that uh, monitors a uh, driver in an obtrusive way. We can make them transparent, integrate them into glass, for example, a solar panel that harvests energy or sensors, for example, fingerprint sensors on a, on a, a windshield that identifies the driver. Or we can also, with flexible electronics, monitor battery and uh, also develop the next generation of battery solutions for uh, electrical vehicle. So the way I came to Antoven is a long story. Uh, I grew up in Iran, but after uh, finishing my high school, I uh, entered uh, a university in Japan. I wanted to go far away and study in a different language, in a different country. So Japan was a nice place to start with. I did uh, technical studies there, did my master's, worked for a couple of years. And um, after that, with my family, we decided to go to US. And then we decided to have uh, come to Netherlands. I have two kids like you, they're going to school. So we wanted to have the best education. And we think Netherlands has very good education system. And for me to come to Eindhoven was a very nice and easy choice because it's a center for uh, technologies and innovation. Tom, nice to meet you and thank you for coming and hope to see you soon. Bye bye. So that's how it works. Companies make sure they're located near to each other so they can exchange knowledge and cooperate. It's cool to see so many nationalities and cultures in Eindhoven. Jean Bachelmans is next on my list. He's from Belgium. Hey Tom, how are you man? Look what I'm doing. I'm playing this fantastic maze game and I'm controlling walking through the maze with the movement of my eyes. So these glasses are smart glasses and with these little sensors they can actually detect where my eyes are looking at. And this is being used in a lot of cases around the world now. Um, people who have uh, disabilities they can start moving things by the movement of their eyes and when they blink they can activate just like when you click with a mouse. And you can think of many other use cases. Think about augmented reality and virtual reality where you have to control things through the th through your eyes these kind of technologies with these kind of new glasses will open up a whole amount of new applications in the future coming down the line and one last thing we think that these glasses can help detect detect parkinson's disease because when you can detect rapid eye movements, you can actually know that people are possibly developing Parkinson's. And that is a major breakthrough in the science of, uh, of healthcare. So Tom, do you want to try them on? Okay, let's do that. Let me help you putting them on. Okay. So Tom, um, you now have the glasses on and what you can feel is you have little detectors, sensors who detect the difference in potential, electrical potential between your nose and between those sensors. And they can measure an electricity potential. And the difference in potential gives the sense of understanding where you're looking at. And the combination of knowing where you're looking at with the blinking gives a whole world of applications. Think about moving through a maze with, with the blinking of your eyes. Think about playing an AR or VR game in a completely new world inside of your virtual reality space. Think about a doctor having to operate and moving things or cutting things in the body with the movement of his eyes and with the blinking. So we're gonna evolve uh, these glasses even further. We're gonna make them a little bit smaller. That's not very easy to do, but we are not iMac if we couldn't do that. And we're gonna try to make these functionality into everyday glasses for all the people around the world. Do you like that? Definitely. 
Okay, Tom, let's give it a try in this amazing maze game. So watch at the maze, and now watch carefully, for example, to the right, and blink with your eyes. There you go, you can see, very easy to do. Look up and blink. Look right and blink. Look up and blink. Look to the right and blink. Look left and blink. Look up and blink. Once more left and blink. One more double blink. Yeah, you made it, Tom. Congratulations. Okay, Tom, that was cool, wasn't it? I've got one more thing, one new cool technology for you. Do you want to try that out? Okay, give me your glasses. Let's replace them with your normal glasses. There you go. And I've got it in this closet. Have a look to this new technology. Can you imagine what this is? No? Well, first of all, it fits right on your head. There you go. And it can measure your brain activity. It measures all the brain waves inside of that little beautiful head of yours. Once we know your brain activity, we can measure the quality of your health. We can measure how healthy you are. This actually replaces a whole amount of devices. So Tom, this was a story about our wearables today, but we're actually working on a brand new world where there is no more wearables. So you actually will not need this anymore. We're working on technology we call implantables or ingestibles. That's technology which is built inside of your body. For example, to measure the healing process of new capabilities inside of your body. That's very cool technology. Okay, Tom, let me invite you back whenever we have that technology ready. Would you like that? Okay, Tom, see you then, man. Bye-bye. Yeah. So that was fun. They've got all kinds of stuff there I can use when I grow up. Let's see what more Eindhoven has to offer. Next to technology, Eindhoven is also a pioneer in design. The well-known design academy Eindhoven delivered a lot of talent. A breeding place for designers and other creative minds is Stripe S. This is the main stage for the Dutch Design Week, which attracts every year more than 350,000 people all over the world. And it's the place where people come to relax and just have a drink with friends. Good morning, Eindhoven. You're listening to Radio 1, and it's precisely 7 o'clock. Morning! I'm excited for today, but first, breakfast! With companies like Philips and ASML, Eindhoven has always had a taste for tech and innovation. There's one thing all high-tech companies desperately need talent. And where better to grow talent than at school? Wow! That's Stella V, the first solar-powered family car ever to seat five people. I think I saw it on Instagram once. The student team of the Eindhoven University of Technology won the World Solar Challenge for family cars. Stella V finds the quickest route and shows how much energy you will save compared to a normal car.
I'm heading to meet Dr. Robot. Really curious what he has to say. Hey Tom, welcome uh, in our lab here at uh, Eindhoven University of Technology. Hi Professor Steinberg. Hi Amigo. Hey Tom, this is my friend the robot. Uh, very recently we became world champion with soccer. And not with our human team, no, with our robot team. And I'm very proud of that. And also, uh, about two years ago, we were the first in the world who actually used a robot to do an operation inside a human eye. So Tom, we are here in the automotive lab, but we are surrounded here with robotics. Uh, that's one of our research uh, items where we look how can we uh, design robots which really can help humans in the future. Elderly people who, who uh, need uh, care and uh, we think that robotics can play an important role for elderly healthcare. But also cars, cars are becoming in fact robots. Uh, I think in the future you maybe will not need a driving license anymore. Your car will drive you in a much safer way. Those technologies we are working on here in my group. So Tom, what I would like to achieve on the long term uh, is to actually have such technology like Amigo uh, be of help for, for humans. Take for instance an, an elderly person who is living at home and would like to stay living at home, although that person cannot move too much. It would be very nice if Amigo can help in getting something. So imagine you would like to have a, an ice cream uh, and that you say to Amigo, hey Amigo, I would like to have an ice cream. And then Amigo understands what you say. So, and will we'll ask you, okay, you would like to have an ice cream? I say yes. And then Amigo will find its way to the fridge, open the fridge, get an ice cream, close the fridge and bring it to you and say, okay, here Tom, here's your ice cream. So. Uh, that's what I would like to develop, technology which really is of help uh, for humans and especially in this case of service robotics, I think it's very important for elderly healthcare in the future. Wow, interesting what robots can do already. I'm wondering what's next? So Tom, you would like to know what the next big thing is in, in technology. I think data is very important. The combination of software and hardware as we see in those robots is really relevant. The same exactly you see in, in driving and autonomous driving. I personally, I also believe that technology for healthcare will be huge, a huge development. Personalized healthcare, watches which are going to measure you, uh, but also like the things we do here to develop surgical robots, which make super surgeons uh, from our, our current surgeons. Um, those are a few of the things I see, uh, I see developing. The most important uh, thing I want to say to you, Tom, is that things are moving incredibly fast. It's going faster and faster and faster. And that makes this time frame an amazing time frame to live in and also to contribute from our uh, technology. curious when it will become the standard to use robots everywhere. Maybe one day I will have my own robot who can clean my room for me. So maybe Eindhoven doesn't have a historic centre, but this is the city where magic happens. The centre vibrates with energy and is full of all kinds of festivals like GLOW. back to high-tech campus Eindhoven. Later, I will meet with Hans de Jong of Philips. But first, I'm going to the strip. The place where 12,000 researchers and developers meet during lunchtime. What kind of people work here? So my name is Benjamin Chang. I'm the CEO of the medtech startup Usono. Hi, I'm Anke de Swartz. I'm the Marketing Communications Manager at Philips Innovation Services. Hello, 
My name is Risto Schellnes. I work as a quality engineer at Smart Photonics in Eindhoven. I'm Gerard de Daaldorp, a technical director within NXP Semiconductors, and I lead a program to organize projects around connected and automated driving. This involves a lot of engagements with universities, institutions and companies, and therefore the Eindhoven area and high-tech campus is an excellent place to be. Hello, my name is Roel Janssen. I'm the global director of City Farming at Signify. In my organization, there are working really smart people who can help turn your idea into a real product. Here at the GrowWise Research Center, we investigate all the factors that affect the plant growth. We ease, improve and innovate the use of ultrasound. And our first product, the ProbeFix, helps with better reproducibility and reduces RSI at sonographers in the medical sector. At Smart Photonics, we work on photonics, which is the technology to make chips that work on light instead of electronic currents. Here at the High Tech Campus, we have facilities like clean rooms and labs and we can help support your innovation to bring it to the market. Our chips are mostly used to make internet faster and greener, but they can also be used in airplanes to make them safer, or perhaps to measure the breath uh, to monitor your health, or in the race cars to make them more efficient. In a multi-layer environment, using the most advanced LED technology, we try to improve yield, quality and taste of several products, like vegetables and fruits, for example, this basil. So I've started my journey at the Philips Museum. Now it's time to meet the president of Philips Netherlands, Hans de Jong. I think you can safely say that Philips is the founding father of this high-tech region. Over the last decade, we've seen both research and manufacturing develop into an ecosystem of open innovation and collaborative manufacturing. That makes up this ecosystem today. So Tom, what makes the high-tech campus really different from other places in the world is first of all, it's a true breeding ground of new ideas. New ideas based on both deep technological knowledge, but also the breadth of the technology that we have here available. Many small and big companies reside here, but what it makes it specifically unique in the world is a culture of true collaboration. Everybody works together here. And I think that is especially something that we have here and we, you find in no other place in the world today. In this world, we have big societal problems and one is energy, you know about, we go to solar panels, healthcare, we're getting older, so we need to find solutions to help older people stay safe at home, a mobility, we need to find new ways of cars, for instance a car that works on solar energy. In this region we have knowledge and a culture of collaboration which can help not only ourselves, but the whole world find solutions for these problems. And I think that is why we are so uniquely positioned in this region. Wearable technology, robotics, 3D food printing, solar cars, healthcare. This journey through Eindhoven was mind blowing. Not to mention the amazing people I met. I can't wait to tell my friends all about it. And I will make you a promise. When I'm grown up, I will be a high-tech hero too.